We've come to the end of this video series and I wanted to say a few closing words. Each of us are walking the path of life and Maria and I are so thankful to be walking alongside of you. We count it a privilege to, to know you and, and to serve you. And we're in awe about how wonderful you are. We're humbled by your faith, by your service to the Lord, by your love for him, your love for others, by the sacrifices that you make. We hear the stories of your life, of your faith in action, of your love and your compassion for others. And it just blows us away, quite frankly. We, we're proud of you and we're humbled at the same time. We're proud because of who you are and of what you've done. We're humbled by your love for the Lord, your love for the lost. And we're very just very touched by you and who you are. We honor you. We, we thank the Lord for you. We're thankful to be associated with such awesome people. You're people who just love God so deeply. You, you have that connect with them and it's just a beautiful thing to witness. And it's a beautiful thing to be part of. And we're so glad to be part of your life. We celebrate your life. We celebrate your service. We celebrate the fruits of your Christianity. We love that you are letting your light shine before others. We love that, that you're reflecting the Lord in the prism of your life. We, we're, we're so happy that you, that you reflect Jesus, that, you, that you're shining before others. And it's just a beautiful thing to see, to see the special you, the who you are, the what God made you just shining through. And our prayer is, that you'll recognize more and more that, that you are special, that you are made special by the Lord, that he loves you specially, and that he's just made you into a special person. And, and also that he loves you for who you are, for what you are, for how he's made you. And it's just a wonderful thing to kind of relax in the Lord a little bit and to say, you know, I know I've got faults. I know I've got failings. I know I've got bad habits. And, you know, I'm trying to get over them, but maybe I'm not making that great of headway. But, you know, God loves me. God loves you. He loves you just how you are. Sure, we need to make improvements. Sure, we have our weaknesses and all. But he just loves you so deeply because he made you the way you are. When I was praying about what to talk to you about this morning, the Lord gave a short little prophecy and I want to read it to you. Shine, my loves, shine. You are the light of the world because you house my spirit within you. Don't hide your light. Let it shine for all to see. You were made by me. I put my special touch within you, that extra special something that makes you, you. When you chose to receive me, to love me, to follow me, I was able to use your special something to reflect me, to shine through you in an individual way. Let your specialness shine. Use it to attract others, to interest them in you, so that through you they can learn to know me. I have sent you forth as a light in the midst of darkness, to illuminate the paths of others that they may find me. It's about being who you are, who I made you to be, and using the way I created you to bring others to me. In doing so, you glorify my Father who sent me. And as he sent me, so I send you. The adventure of your life will one day come to an end. And I will welcome you into my arms with deep love and gratitude that you lived a life in a manner that reflected me, that glorified me, and which made an eternal difference in the lives of others. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's a beautiful prophecy, and it's so true that you are so special. And it's beautiful to know that the Lord rejoices in that, isn't it? Okay, I want to read you um, a little bit from this book that somebody loaned me for the evening, and it's called 
Love Does by Bob Goff. Um, and I want to read a little something out of it. Uh, it's the context of what I'm going to read is that he and these four other guys when they were young um, sailed their small boat from Los Angeles to Honolulu in a, a race that took 16 days and lasted for like 2,700 miles. Um, he was the navigator on the, on the boat, but he had never navigated before. They had a navigator who was going to go with him, but then he bailed at the last minute. So, this, so Bob had to like learn navigation in about two days, super complicated, and apparently he didn't do that great at it. So I'll just read you what he said, okay? The name of the race was the Trans-Pac Race, Trans-Pacific. There's a tradition in the Trans-Pac Race, no matter when you finish the race, even if it's two in the morning. When you pull into Ala Manoa Marina in Oahu, that's in Hawaii, there's a guy who announces the name of the boat and every crew member who made the trip. There's a huge loudspeaker and his booming voice bursts through the trade winds and welcomes each person home. It's the same guy and he's been announcing each boat's arrival at the end of every transpact race for decades. I'll spare you most of the details of the trip. Just know it involved a lot of water, some stinky dudes, overblown stories of manhood, a lot of canned meats and chili. Just when we came to the end of our supplies, we sailed across the finish line just off of Diamond Head and into the marina. It was a few hours before dawn. It had been 16 days since we'd set out from Los Angeles in our little boat, knowing very little about navigation. Suddenly, the silence was broken by a booming voice over a loudspeaker announcing the name of our tiny boat. Somehow, the way he said it, we sounded like we were the size of an aircraft carrier. Then he started announcing the names of our ragtag crew like he was introducing heads of state. One by one, he announced all our names with obvious pride in his voice. And it became really an emotional moment for each one of us on board. When it came to my name, he didn't talk about how few nav navigation skills I had, nor about the zigzag course I'd led us on to, to get there. He didn't tell everyone I didn't even know which way north was or, or about all my other mess ups. Instead, he just welcomed me in from the adventure like a proud father would. When he was done, there was a pause and then in a sincere voice, his last words to the entire crew were these. Friends, it's been a long trip. Welcome home. Because of the way he said it, we all welled up and fought back tears. I wiped my eyes as I reflected in that moment about all the uncertainty that we had come, that had come with our journey, all the sloppy sailing and how I knew so little but none of that mattered now because we had completed the race. I always kind of thought heaven might be kind of like that, a sort of a similar experience. I read in the Bible that there's a book of life. I don't think that this book is full of equations or, and I don't think that it's just a list of names either. I think the book of life is more like a book of lives, a book of stories. I bet it's about people traveling in the direction of Jesus, trying to follow him. People like me who've made lots of mistakes along the way and had, and had to make some mid-course corrections. It's about people who stayed within the large circle of his love and grace, staying the course on the long line pointing to him. And their names weren't in the book because of what they did or what they didn't do. They were there because of who God is and what he has done to draw a circle around them. After we each cross the finish line in our lives, I imagine it like floating into the Hawaiian marina when our names were announced one by one. At the end, 
perhaps simple words spoken by a loving and proud God will be. Friends, it's been a long trip. Welcome home. Thank you, Lord. And you know, it has been a long trip. And it, we're, we're still on our journey of life. But we're heading home. So let's do what we can to bring others along with us. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's our commission from Jesus. So let's do our very best, shall we? I asked Maria if she would close in prayer today. So she's going to say a little prayer for us all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Dear precious Lord, thank you that our home is in heaven, that you'll be waiting with open arms to welcome us. It won't matter how we've messed up, what twists and turns our life has taken. It'll all be washed away in your overwhelming love. We're humbled that not only do you love us like this, but you're preparing a place for us that's magnificent. Your word says that no one has even imagined the things that you have prepared for us. So help us to never lose sight of this ultimate reward, you and heaven too, which makes every sacrifice more than worth it. Until that day, You've given us a big job to do as a family, to find as many as we can to tell about your love so we can all live together with you forever. You know, dear Jesus, that Peter and I have labored a long time in prayer for the family and its future and seeking you for answers. We've heard from our precious members who had questions and suggestions and who voiced their needs and desires who expressed how they love the family and want to see it grow and progress. We've now come to the end of this series of videos. We believe Peter has followed you step by step in giving these explanations. He's expressed our hearts and what you want for this beloved family and for each of our dear loved ones. We're trusting you, Lord, that these words have been a blessing. Help them to answer questions, to soothe hearts, to invigorate minds, and to motivate actions. This is your work, your family, so you'll have to do the miracles of rebuilding. Give people confidence that you are working and that you love them and are going to do what's best for them. You want to see each of them go far for you. Guide each one to their place of service, or if they've already found it, help them to realize you can use them in more ways than they might have thought. Help each one to seek you and to look around them with intentionality and with expectancy. Give each of them the impetus and vision for the wonderful things you can do through them. Provide them with the fellowship they need. Help them to be able to enjoy times with their friends and brethren and to also reach out to fellowship with others who are lonely and who need them and you. Thank you, Lord, for their faithful giving which the family so greatly needs. Bless and supply them in every way as they give through their prayers, their concern, their tithes, and their offerings. Together we can build on the firm foundations of you and your love. Make us strong in your spirit, in your power, and in your word. Keep us dwelling together in the unity of your spirit. Keep us looking to you for your guidance and direction. Give us conviction to serve you however we can, wherever we can, whenever we can, with whomever we can. And dear Lord, for those who feel that they're in too small a place to be of much use to you, show them that wherever they are, you can use them. It doesn't matter what circumstance has got them there. You have a plan for them in their situation. If they want to share your love, that's all that matters, and nothing can hold them back. Dear Jesus, thank you for your great love for us. When we were afar off, you brought us close and took us into your arms. When we were dead in our trespasses and sins, you made us alive and vibrant and full of your spirit. When we had no hope of life, you not only gave us life, but you gave it more abundantly. When we were so sick with sin, 
You poured out your healing spirit on us. You made us into new creatures. You gave us all things richly to enjoy. When we had no meaning or purpose in our lives, you gave us the highest privilege possible by making us your ambassadors, your representatives. You told us to go and find others who we could bring to you so that your love gifts could be poured out on them also. Oh, Jesus, we don't want to fail you in this. I claim for all of us your key of overwhelming love that will help us sense the depth of your love for those we minister to. Help us to constantly think mission and to remember that you have no other plan. You're counting on us. <laughs>